Greetings, my name is Susan, a 36-year-old woman who shared her life with her husband for seven years. Initially, things were great between them, but a negative shift occurred when Dylan, her husband, received a promotion. Susan observed a change in his demeanor, becoming cocky and arrogant, and noticed him distancing himself from her. Concerned, she confided in her trusted mother-in-law, expressing her confusion about Dylan's behavior. Despite attempting to communicate with Dylan multiple times, Susan found him dismissive, always insisting that everything was fine. When she suggested seeking couples counseling for a more structured approach, he reacted with anger. Perplexed by this unfamiliar behavior in her husband, Susan's mother-in-law suggested that perhaps her affectionate attitude and idealized view of Dylan blinded her to the truth. As the months passed with ongoing issues following Dylan's promotion, Susan stumbled upon alarming news when she found his phone unattended. Cleaning the bedroom, she noticed a text from someone named Pizza Hut, prompting her curiosity. Opening the message, she discovered a series of distressing texts and inappropriate pictures, revealing that Dylan was cheating on her. Overwhelmed by the shocking revelation, Susan hastily locked the phone as she heard Dylan approaching. When Dylan entered inquiring about his socks, Susan, attempting to hide her distress, mentioned tidying up the room. Dylan noticed her troubled expression, questioning why she looked as if she had seen a monster. At that moment, Susan realized that the person standing before her was no longer the sweet Dylan she knew, but an unrecognizable beast, shattering her world and breaking her heart in a matter of seconds. At that moment, I lacked the strength to address what I had just witnessed. I mumbled something about experiencing period cramps, and he left for the night. Alone, I sobbed into my pillow while my unfaithful husband slept peacefully beside me. Despite the overwhelming sadness, anger consumed me. How could he betray our relationship after everything? Holding on to this anger, I decided to confront him by exposing his infidelity to no one other than his mother. Early the next morning, I accessed his phone and collected all the evidence I needed before Dylan woke up. It turned out that his mistress's name was Rebecca. I sent all the information to my phone, placed his device back where I found it, and patiently awaited Gloria's arrival. Gloria arrived shortly after Dylan left for work. When I showed her the distressing evidence, she mirrored my look of horror and disgust. After a moment of shock, she voiced her concern, stating that something needed to be done as Dylan had lost control. Feeling deeply hurt, I confided in Gloria, acknowledging my pain. She reassured me that we would get through this together and decided to call Dylan on loudspeaker. During the call, she confronted him about the evidence, expressing disbelief and warning him of the consequences if it turned out to be true. In the ensuing silence, confirmation echoed. Dylan was indeed cheating, and it seemed to have been going on for a while. Gloria instructed him to return home immediately for a face-to-face -face discussion. Waiting for Dylan to return felt like an eternity. When he finally arrived, he brought along a surprise. Rebecca. Confused and distraught, I demanded an explanation, referring to her as a wench. To my shock, Dylan declared his love for Rebecca, apologizing for the revelation, but expressing his newfound happiness with her. I now find myself in a position higher than most aspects of my past life. I am compelled to uplift myself. To put it delicately, you resemble the earlier version of a gaming console, while the reader is akin to the PS5. Dylan, do you comprehend the gravity of your actions? Are you aware of the turmoil you have subjected Susan to? How could you audaciously involve yourself with a married man? Do you possess no sense of shame? Well, mother, I firmly believe that he and I are soulmates. He professes love for me, and reciprocally, I am in love with him. We plan to embark on a journey to build a family together. Oh, you assume you can change this man? Newsflash, dear, a cheetah remains a cheetah. Based on his recent revelations, he will perpetually seek the next bigger, better, and newer thing. You're not unique, sweetheart. Heed my advice and exit now before the situation worsens. I see that you are young with your whole life ahead. Don't be tethered to a man of such ill repute. Susan, I understand your pain, but it's not my fault that you've let yourself go. As a man, I have needs, and Rebecca fulfills them all. I want a divorce. My heart couldn't endure any more shattering. In my stunned state, I could barely respond. The situation was becoming increasingly dreadful. Amidst the shouting between Gloria and Dylan, I received a text from our family lawyer. It informed me that my great uncle had passed away, leaving me an inheritance. However, due to family disputes, the processing would take longer than expected. The message concluded with a plea to call for further clarification. Considering my tumultuous and toxic family background, I harbor serious doubts that there would be any inheritance left for me. 
I've always found myself at the bottom of the priority list, a sentiment that echoed in my failed marriage. Tuning back into the commotion, I realized Susan was addressing me. Dylan, you've revealed your true self. You no longer want to be with me. I can't fight for someone who won't fight for us. By the time karma catches up with you, you'll regret your existence. I'm done here. With whatever strength remained, I collected my belongings, packed my essentials, and walked out the front door. Gloria called after me, offering reassurance that everything would be fixed, holding on to the belief that her sweet baby boy was still alive. However, all I saw was a hollow shell of a man. For the following weeks, I took refuge in cheap motel rooms while Dylan expedited the divorce proceedings with the help of his friends. Despite his acknowledgement of the hardship on my end, it seemed like a feeble attempt to ease his guilty conscience. Emotionally drained, I had exhausted all my tears. Approximately eight months post the tumultuous events, Dylan and I were officially divorced. Amidst the legal wrangling over assets, surprisingly, we maintained a cordial approach. Dylan, in his selfish nature, wanted to retain most of his money, knowing I had nothing to my name as a former housewife. Oddly enough, I desired none of that tainted wealth that had fueled his selfish and malevolent behavior. Well, I suppose that concludes our chapter. It was a pleasure knowing you, Susan. Take good care of yourself. I wish for your presence in a place more suited to your actions. I have no intention of maintaining contact with you, so kindly refrain from doing so. Have the day you believe you deserve. After our tumultuous separation, I walked away, still bearing the weight of pain and disillusionment. Nevertheless, I managed to gather myself and still legally married to Dylan, utilize the funds from our shared account to initiate a small business idea, a quaint cafe that I began renting. It became a means for me to generate income, recognizing that the divorce settlement would likely yield little or nothing for me. While a route to my newly rented apartment complex, an unexpected email from Bobby, my confusion heightened. His message began with an apology for the marital ordeal I was enduring, but hinted at some positive news, urging me to contact him urgently. Five hours later, we met at my cozy cafe and Bobby, acknowledging my distress, cut to the chase. The revelation was astounding. I had inherited a significant sum. Shocked, I questioned him, and he confirmed that the inheritance was mine. Apologizing for the prolonged process, Bobby explained that my great uncle Arthur had bequeathed the majority of his wealth to me. He handed me a letter from uncle Arthur, expressing his understanding of the hardships I had faced, always being relegated to the back by both friends and family. I have made a firm decision that it's time to put an end to this situation. No longer should you endure pain and humiliation. Please accept this inheritance money and use it to improve your life in the best way possible. Given the nature of your toxic family, they may not be pleased with how the funds are distributed, but my concern lies solely in your health and well-being. As you read this, understand that all the money you are about to receive is rightfully yours. I want to spare you the troubles and negotiations with others, hence why you are receiving this money now. I am confident that you will use it to achieve wonderful things. All my love, your great uncle Arthur. Upon finishing the letter, tears streamed down my face. Some customers left, disturbed by the scene, but I paid no attention. Overwhelmed with joy, it was a refreshing change from months of tears and questioning why this had happened to me. How much is it? I asked. It's a $250,000, came the reply. I gasped. That amount was substantial, more than enough to support the growth and expansion of my business. Profusely thanking Bobby for his loyalty and kindness, he departed. That night, I eagerly called Gloria to share the incredible news. The amount is how much? She asked incredulously. Yup, you heard me right, Gloria. Despite everything, we were still in touch. I had trusted her, at least for a while. However, her subsequent actions were utterly deplorable. The next morning, I awoke to a barrage of angry texts from none other than Dylan. Despite explicitly telling him not to contact me again less than 30 hours ago, he persisted. Against my better judgment, I agreed to meet with him, holding on to a glimmer of hope that things might change. We first crossed paths at my cafe. So, this is the infamous cafe. It's rather charming, I suppose. Do you expect me to hand over anything to Dylan? Haven't you taken enough from me? Let's get straight to the point. Half of that money is rightfully mine. My mother disclosed everything to me, including details about the inheritance money that has finally materialized. Talk about impeccable timing, right? Regardless, we require that money. You must be out of your mind if you believe I'll willingly give you anything. Don't you make sufficient money on your own? What is your obsession with me? Why didn't you care when I was going through heartbreak? You didn't even flinch. What's the deal? 
You knew I was falling apart and you were the one responsible for the turmoil. You witnessed my suffering. What more do you want from me? When will you be satisfied? Perhaps when you see me in a coffin. Enough. I don't have time for this. Just give me the money and I'll be on my way. What makes you think you're entitled to this money? Are you mentally unstable? The inheritance situation unfolded while we were still married, so technically that money is rightfully mine. I paused, feeling embarrassed. I wasn't aware of such technicalities. Can something like that be true? So, give me my money. If there's any chance of me giving you money, we'll require a lawyer present. I've heard your demands. Now go home. I'll contact you in the morning. Dylan begrudgingly left, angry because he could no longer control me. If we were still married, I would have given him my kidney if he asked. But now I can't even bear to look him in the eye without feeling repulsed. The next morning, I called Bobby and the lawyers assisting with our divorce. I explained the situation, and everyone unanimously agreed that Dylan's actions were illogical and unjust. The inheritance money was finalized after the divorce papers were signed, meaning any money coming my way is rightfully mine. This aligned with my initial thoughts, but Dylan had attempted to gaslight me into believing otherwise. Frustrated, I drove to the house, determined to confront the situation head-on. For seven years, I used to call home, persistently knocking on the door until someone finally answered. At that moment, a tense exchange ensued. Move! I'm not here for you. I'm here for your evil fiancé. The bewildered response came. What is the meaning of this? Don't you dare come into my house and cause a ruckus? Oh, you mean our house, the house that we built together. You have a lot of nerve treating me this way as if I wasn't good to you. I genuinely believed that you should get your head checked because there are some screws loose. Where is your mother? Like clockwork, Gloria emerged from the kitchen asking, Now what's all this noise I'm hearing? Gloria, how could you do this to me? What do you mean? You told your trifling son about the inheritance money. What for? Don't speak to me about my son that way. I told him because, well, I believe that perhaps we could partake in some of that money. I should have known where Dylan got his cheating habit from. I guess the apple didn't fall far from the tree. All of you are sick trying to siphon money from me. I'm struggling to keep afloat. And something good has happened to me for once in my life. And you people want to take that away from me. Well, too bad. I went on to explain to the bumbling folks that the money I got was entirely mine. And because the divorce papers were signed, there was no way for any of these people to get their hands on my money. Of course, Dylan didn't like this news at all and proceeded to go on a rampage, yelling, cursing, and even breaking things. I saw his true colors, and the situation escalated when Dylan got into his car and drove off. I thought we were done arguing, but when I arrived at my cafe, I found my store vandalized. Broken windows and damaged furniture littered the scene. Immediately, I recognized the culprit behind the vandalism and promptly dialed the perpetrator, Dylan. Expressing my disbelief, I accused him of vandalizing my shop emphasizing the necessity of his actions due to his failure to provide the owed money. In a somewhat threatening tone, I hinted at the absence of security cameras, implying that pressing charges would be a futile endeavor. After disconnecting the call, I reached out to my friend Bobby to assess the situation. To my surprise, Bobby found the situation amusing and saw an opportunity for legal action. Despite my distress, Bobby pointed out that we could sue Dylan for the damages caused, suggesting a chance to renegotiate the terms of my divorce settlement. Frustrated and believing that Dylan had ruined my life, I expressed my concerns to Bobby. However, he assured me that we could build a case against Dylan. To my relief, it turned out that the building's cameras were operational, capturing Dylan's vandalism. Presenting this evidence to Bobby, we collaborated to compose a compelling case against Dylan. Fortunately, our case was well-received, especially considering the tumultuous history of our relationship and the evidence of verbal and emotional abuse. The judge ruled in my favor, awarding me $32,000 in damages. Enraged by the judgment, Dylan attempted to appeal, but his appeals were consistently rejected. With the acquired funds, I could now focus on nurturing and expanding my cafe. The last update on Dylan, Rebecca, and Gloria revealed constant quarrels, and rumors suggested Dylan's involvement with a young, attractive blonde woman.